Hello, everyone, and welcome back to You Thought You Knew, the podcast where we talk about survivor players that may be underrated, underappreciated, or misunderstood. Each episode, we try to answer a question that's designed to make us challenge our preconceived notions about a famous survivor contestant. Of course, there are no right answers. It's just an excuse to talk about our favorite show. As always, I'm your co-host, Nigel Bocanegra, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Kevin McLean. Yes, uh, excited to be here to talk about the first Asian American ever to be on Survivor, Sheehan Wang. Um, are you excited? I'm excited. You know, Sheehan is someone who I think has an interesting uh, role in Survivor history, being on the first All-Star season, but maybe not having the biggest reputation uh, like a lot of the other players that are on that season. So I think it'll be exciting to be able to dive in a little bit more in depth with Sheehan. Yeah, I think we can dig it in. And I feel like, you know, Thailand's a season where a lot of people skip actually because they heard it's not very popular so it's like you're kind of missing half of the Shein story by oling watching all stars both of Shein seasons have a little bit of a uh, a dark hue to them if you will in the uh, the minds of the fans but it's uh it's time that we dig in don't you yeah, think yeah yeah well let's let's get this thing kicked off as the first returning season ever survivor all stars was a star studded affair but Sheehan's inclusion was often scrutinized. Could a pre-merger actually be an all-star? I mean, she placed lower than the rest of the cast, though she did get 10th place just like eventual legend Boston Rob Mariano. Maybe the fake merge wasn't iconic enough for people. And despite Thailand's weak reputation amongst fans, it's still the third highest watch season ever. On her time on Survivor, Sheehan was combative. She was strategic and her gameplay was certainly flawed. But did she do enough in Thailand to warrant a return? You thought you knew Xi'an Wang? Well, we think we do. And on this episode, we're going to answer the question, did Xi'an Wang belong on All Stars? So, uh, Kevin, to just get us started off here, what do you think of the All Stars cast in general? You know, I think the All-Star cast, is, I mean, they think they did a pretty good job. Uh, maybe more with the men, because I think, for those who don't know, the women's group had a lot of high-profile people decline. So, like, Colleen and Elizabeth, who were some of the first people you'd call as the OG sweethearts, you know, didn't want to go on Survivor, Colleen, because I don't think she enjoyed the experience. And Elizabeth, you know, who has just gone to The View, she was getting some mainstream success. And so, a lot of people say that's the reason Amber and Jenna Lewis were there as backups to them. Uh, and for the men, I mean, I don't know if you would change any of the male casting on all stars. I mean, is there, I feel like a lot of them are locks. Yeah. I think, uh, most of them, it would be kind of hard to argue against their inclusion. I think, you know, maybe you could make an argument that Boston Rob being someone who did not make the jury phase of the game, maybe he shouldn't have been there. Uh, and you know, maybe all stars, could be just like all of the end game players, for example. Uh, but I, I think that if you're only going with like the very end game people, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're like keeping yourself open to the most interesting group of players that you could possibly get. So I, I don't think there really is anybody that I would have wanted to see swapped out from the men's group. Yeah. And you know, I, I do think my personal belief always was, is that Sean Rector should have been there instead of Boston Rob. Obviously, Boston Rob goes on to so much success, but it's like, well, Sean lasted so much longer than him. He's actually tied to so much more of the story. He brings a lot more diversity in. But I think, you know, Rob clearly captured the imagination of the producers and they bet on the right horse because he obviously, you know, helped make the show what it is today. So I do think maybe Boston Rob is the only exception. I, Michael Scoopin was certainly someone that was on everyone's, you know, lips uh before his reputation really got tarnished years later uh because his moment was so huge and i mean it was the most watched season ever so i do think for the most part all stars is pretty star studded i do think yeah maybe you can make a claim here or there that there could be some other people but uh I, I don't think there are any true duds i think the closest dud really is amber um but I know that might hurt you in your soul since you're such a fan boy of hers. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump back to Boston Rob first. You know, I, I think that you could actually make an argument that, uh, 
uh, there is a reason to include him over Sean Rector in that he was really exciting as far as trying to push the gameplay forward in Marquesas. And, you know, Sean is able to benefit from like the, uh, the, the set pieces that boss Rob kind of sets up. Right. So I think there is an argument to why you would want to include Rob also from the gameplay perspective as well. Um, Moving to the women in general, I agree. Amber is not someone you would exactly assume is going to be on an all-star season if you were to kind of step back without hearing who the cast is going to be and just make some guesses. Uh, although, if you look at the Australia cast, a majority of them have returned at some point or another, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that y you've made the argument before that uh, so many of the Australian players should have returned because they were viewed by the most number of fans uh, out of any season on the show. Yeah, but you know, like I said in the intro, Thailand's the third most watched, and we only get one representative the entire time, right? So you know, Australia was very popular, so it makes sense. Um, but you know, I do think even in Amber's archetype, you could have asked Kim Powers. Uh, mm -hmm. or even Nalia, Christy uh, from Amazon. They're like other sweetheart-esque women. But, you know, Amber is someone who really kind of stuck out in a lot of people's minds. I know when I think Rob was doing Evolution of Strategy, he mentioned like who he thought was kind of in the mix at the time, and Amber was someone that we're talking about. So it's... I, I, her star may have never been that huge, but clearly the producer saw something in her and she went on to become one of the most recognizable faces on Survivor. So, you know, I guess they made the right choice. You know, I do think that this does happen from time to time that production uh, sees a player out on location and sees them on the island and recognizes that they actually do have things that they're bringing to the table that could potentially warrant a return. But for multiple reasons, just the way that the game plays out, they don't end up editing them in a way that reflects the faith that they have in them as a contestant. Uh, I think that Kelly Wentworth is probably a really good example of that in a more new school season of someone who did not have a particularly large impact on their season, but clearly production believed in her enough to consider her for the ballot. And clearly she showed that like she does have what it takes to make a name for herself in the game, right? So I think it's possible that maybe Amber proved something to them in Australia that didn't exactly make the edit. Yeah. But the thing I will say here, though, is, you know, when people are criticizing who should be on the All-Star seasons or not, you know, she and I think proved a lot more actually on camera than uh, than multiple people did. But her name gets scrutinized and Amber's was, too, to be fair. But um, I don't think any of these people are as egregious technically as Kelly Wentworth, you know, uh, return was, but Kelly was also voted in by the fans. So she clearly had the stamp of approval of so many people, including many people who watch RHAP. So it is really hard to criticize. I do think all stars is maybe what the third most star studded of all of the returning seasons. Cause winners at war obviously was really highly anticipated and then and heroes versus, and heroes versus villains. villains. But, but I think after that, it's kind of hard to argue against it. And I think a, a big reason for that too. And you know, this kind of, uh, matches a bit of what my viewing experience was so many people who came in as fans post all-stars know all the people who make the end game as these big legends of the show right amber uh Sheehan, boston rob they didn't make it like to the very end of their seasons but they're people who are dominating uh, making it to final six, right? So they really do make names for themselves. Yeah, but I think there's also criticism at the time, which is that, well, of course they got to the end. They're not threats. They don't have any reputation. They're not the winners well, no. being targeted. Uh, and like, do course. we, just like with game changers, do we want those people to go very far? I, I don't think it's a question of if we want them to get very far. It's that they forced us to, to be household names, right? Like Boston, Rob, and Amber... They are robber. We just did our last podcast about them, right? So as much as you could argue with some of these people's inclusion on the season, I think that, you know, we walk away saying, in retrospect, I mean, everybody leaves their mark on Survivor history. Yeah, and it, it, it all worked out, right? In the way that, it like, did. Kelly Wentworth returns and she kind of really kind of goes with it. Dave Vaughn in Big Brother is the same mm -hmm. way, you know? And so, like, it happens. I will say as someone who has been there since the beginning, you know, I, I've, I've watched Survivor since I was eight years old in the year 2000, you know, there are, I feel like sometimes I can be a bit of a gatekeeper when it comes to who should be there because you don't say, can you believe it? Me having an opinion, but 
it's like, why hasn't Sean Rector been back? I mean, he wasn't even really called. You know, why haven't why hasn't Crystal Cox been back? Why aren't all these other types of people who were really big, you know, fundamental characters in their seasons not returning? And instead, producers are choosing to take a chance quite often on people who, uh, you know, did not show that much, even if, you know, the results-oriented thinking later would suggest that, you know, it was all worth it. You know, it, it, it kind of saddens me a little bit to know some of these bigger names you know, their time is clearly passed. You know, my heart goes out to Twyla Tanner so much because of those things. And um, I, I, I think uh, All Stars actually sets the tone for what it requires to be returning to me. Because after All, you know, both in All Stars and Heroes versus Villains, and also Guatemala, which had returnees and Micronesia. So, like for the first four seasons where people are returning, everyone at least made it to tenth place in their original season. So they're all people that lasted seven episodes. They're all people who, you know, would have made it to the classic merge phase at the time because most people would merge at 10. I mean, Sheehan thought she made it to the merge, right? But she made it to that, that position, the last pre-juror. And also on Big Brother All-Stars, all of the people there at least made it to the last pre-juror's position, right? So Jace and Kaser are voted off right before the jury. But like everyone there is, had fully been established. And so by the time, um, and then uh, like Kara Moen where like Francesca's there. And then later Monica Culpepper, like all these like people who were actually don't even meet that qualification. I found it to be very scandalous at the time. I said, them, there's so many other people here, but clearly the show is, has continued to survive for over 20 years. And I think it's because they've been willing to take chances on some people who became really big names, but then sometimes, you know, they bring back someone who didn't go super far and they, they flop twice. And that's like, ugh. But, you know, speaking of Francesca, you can come back, be a double first boot and make a name for yourself. I mean, Francesca is iconic for holding this title that is unlikely to be beaten again. Right. Bruce, Bruce theoretically has a chance. Fingers crossed. It does not happen to him. Right. I would like Francesca to be able to keep her title. I think that that's appropriate. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's fair. But I mean, do you think Sheehan deserved to be on All Stars? Like, does, does she does? Let, yeah, let's jump to the question. Do I think Sheehan should have been on All Stars? Uh, you know, I think when I was coming into preparing for this episode, I was probably around like, yeah, I feel like it was fair, but definitely not an obvious choice by any means. But I think after kind of revisiting and thinking more, I do think it makes sense that she's included. Um, she might not be the first person that you think of, right? And if you acknowledge that Colleen and Elizabeth were not going to be there, it's like, well, if they're not going to be there, of course she is going to be there. Yeah. That's kind of, I don't know. That's kind of how I see it. What about you? I mean, I think Sheehan should definitely have been there. I've never thought it was weird. I, I will say, of course, that she's someone that really uh, works for me, right? Like, she's Asian. I'm Asian. I have a connection to that. Her story stood out to me in a way. She's super unique as a casting choice for the first seven seasons. I mean, who is like Sheehan in the first seven seasons? I think Sheehan is a really unique character, Um in the show, and especially in early Survivor. I, I think that, you know, so many of the scenes of her with uh, her tribe in Thailand where she's being really misunderstood and even for eating parts of the chicken uh, that, you know, many Americans, you know, are not normally eating, but it's like, you're starving out there. Of course you should eat everything <laughs> that you have as an option. I, I would rather eat the different organs of a chicken than a snail that I just like found on a rock. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. It's, I, I thought, I thought it was wild that these people were criticizing her and I found it very distasteful to, you know, like she's a starving human being. You're all starving. Why is this so weird to you? And there's other cultures in the world that, that, that are actually the majority. There are more people in Asia than all the other continents combined. So it's like, it seems so strange that they had this reaction, but it's also not that surprising. And I, I think, uh, you know, I remember that moment in Thailand because my mom and I had that conversation about like people looking at you differently because of the way you eat and the food you consume because it's not culturally the same. And I thought it was a really important conversation. You know, Survivor is one of the biggest TV shows at the time, you know, where like 20 million people were still watching by Thailand, like 5 million people watch now. And we the population has increased so much since then. So it's like, it's actually really critical to have those conversations. And I thought Sheehan totally had such 
presence. She had such perspective. She goes out in such a unique way because of the fake merge. I mean, that's like Thailand's signature twist, the big moment we all remember. So like why, I, I, I never thought it was that weird for her to be a returnee. I, obviously, I don't think she's the first call. I don't think she's tier one because I think you are calling um, uh, Sue and Kathy. Jerry. Jerry. I mean, these are like the first ones. But, you know, I think she's at least at the same league, even as Jenna Maraska. And I know she's a winner, but I thought Jenna Maraska was always second to Heidi as a character. And um, I think she just as makes much sense as, as Alicia does. Like, I, I think they're at least in that same area. And she would be the only Thailand representative. And I think there was something really critical about having someone from every single season be on the first All-Star season because so many people, like, just checked on the Survivor because it was just such a big deal. Like, it was water cooler talk. And if you just watched Thailand and you saw the promo and you saw Shein on it, you'd be like, oh, maybe I'll check this out. And like, that is worth it on its own. And I said earlier about Shein being so different than everyone else. I think it has a lot to do with Shein being, you know, one of the first ever like, quote, like smart girl uh, casting, kind of the acerbic witty ones, you know, far before Courtney Yates and even Aubrey and Angelina and Eliza and all of them. Like the only other person that archetype really is Kelly Goldsmith, I think, who also goes out fairly early. She's ninth place. She ends 10th place. So, you know, I do think um, they're part of a, a growing demographic in America because they both were like highly educated, uh, kind of like white collar women who were opinionated. And I thought they, they brought so much to their seasons and, it, 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 yeah, I guess some people really wanted Helen to come back instead as the Thailand representative. But I feel like Helen had a lot of crossover uh, with Sue already. And like Dina had a lot of crossover with uh, Kathy. And it, and T-Bird has a lot of crossover with Tina. Like she and feels so distinct that I don't think her, she should be scrutinized for her return. I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think when you take a step back and look at all the returnees of all the seasons, she doesn't even look like that egregious at all. So... You know, why don't we take some time to go over the uh, main bullet points of Shein's story? It might have been uh, quite a while since folks have watched either Thailand or All Stars. So uh, do you want to take us through that? Yeah. So season five, Thailand, Shein is the first ever Asian American contestant on the show. And that's like a real, that was a really big deal. Um, it was definitely part of the online conversation when the cast was announced. She's 28 years old. Took five seasons. Took five Might seasons to get there. Uh, 28 years old, executive recruiter from New York. Um, and Sheehan was notable for, you know, getting into conflict, being the she-devil. And it, But she's most notable for, you know, at the final 10, you know, she was like, I made it to the merge, I can flip to their side. But the problem was, it wasn't a merge. Uh, and Jeff tells them, oh, I didn't say you were merging. You're actually just living on the same beach. And you're still two separate tribes. And so when her tribe had lost that immunity challenge, they were like, I mean, Shan was just trying to flip on us. And they vote her out unanimously, essentially. Uh, and then a few years later on All Star, she returns. And she's the sole representative of Thailand then. And she is on the Mogo Mogo tribe, is very closely aligned with Kathy and Lex. And the three of them merge in the minority at the final nine. And after Kathy and Lex are booted, she's the last one of her group as they're being pagonged. She wins a clutch immunity challenge, which is one of my favorite moments in the show. And uh, she is swiftly booted at the next tribal council when she's vulnerable, but not before declaring that she thinks Amber Burkich is going to win the game. Um, she, she really only delays her fate by one episode, but she uh, truly enjoys the moment as much as she possibly can. Oh, she, it's like the best day of her life and the worst day of everyone else's, which really kind of made me even more have fun with it. So yeah, that's Shan in a nutshell. I mean, she's a bit of a perpetual outsider. Even when she's in a majority, she never feels like she's like in the locust of power, right? Because uh, Shan, I, I think, does have a bit of a uh, challenging social game at times. And I think some of that's not even her fault. I do think clearly in Thailand, there's a lot of like cultural like challenges that are happening here. But, you know, Shan does never seem to be taken that seriously by her group. I think she has the record for most votes cast against her in Thailand. Um, and no one seems to want to work with her on All Stars, especially after Kathy and Lex go. So I do think uh, Shan is a very interesting uh, character. But do you have any favorite like, Shein moments? Um, you've kind of touched on it, but I, I certainly love, it, it's not any one particular moment. It's kind of peppered throughout towards the end game, but Shein kind of being this like 
oracle around Amber's win uh, because she always feels like she's like really uh, like sharing wisdom. She has identified where everything is like really going. She, she <laughs> mentions uh, maybe it was on the, um, maybe it was on like an interview on RHAP. I think it was probably outside of the show, uh, but she talks about, recognizing Boston Rob as this big player. He's someone who's out in front, but there's this mysterious force swirling around him. And it's like, that's, it's a really interesting way to just refer to like Amber hanging out with Boston Rob, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that she really kind of like sits in her wisdom and feels like she's trying to like let you in on the secret. And it sometimes feels like she's also kind of uh, trying to like make herself be correct in retrospect saying like, well, of course this was like the right decision. Amber was, you know, headed to the end and I identified her as that, at that threat. Yeah. Well, it, cause in Shan's perspective, uh, Amber is Lady Macbeth and she's controlling Rob for his vote. Um, and, you know, Amber will say that's not exactly what happened at all. Like, she just liked hanging out with Boston Rob. They were clearly developing a romance and that the flirting was part of her strategy at first. But, uh, you know, Sheehan is proven right, essentially, because she's like the swing vote, essentially, at the final tribal council. So by voting for Amber to win, she's essentially validating her own perspective here. And so uh, one of my favorite moments, which is tied to this, is that at the All-Star uh reunion you know jeff says amber you can give a car to someone and she gives it to Sheanne because she was the swing vote and then it like it cuts to Sheanne, and Sheanne is just like nodding with her eyes closed she's like mm -hmm. i knew I the knew entire it. time i knew and that is something that like when i do a lot of my research a lot of people like talk about Sheanne like kind of being a, a bit of a know-it-all and she's very smug and she's always like right except she's wrong also often <laughs> but i i just have so much fun with her um, I, I mentioned the immunity uh, win as one of my favorite moments. I mean, I, I just love a plucky underdog and Sheehan embodies that so much. Um, and I, when, when she wins that immunity, she is on cloud nine screaming at the other players trying to like rip her hat off. Yeah. I mean, she's having the best time because they all discounted her. And that was like my favorite episode to watch. Like if I was just having like a, sick from school that day i'd put the Sheehan wins immunity episode on because i just i just really related to this really plucky outspoken person who is like literally reading them the gospel it's like they're going to be the final two if we don't do anything about it and they're all like now nah, just get rid of her. she's so annoying and then as soon as she wins they still don't even want to approach and work yeah, with her nothing changes after she wins that immunity no one's like uh now i kind of feel like my feet are on the fire i need to do something uh, she goes to Alicia and Alicia's like, I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Alicia, hello. Why aren't you taking advantage of this opportunity? But I, I just think, you know, a lot of them just truly did not respect Sheehan and probably that is some of Sheehan's fault. I'm sure like her personality just is not meshing. I mean, it's like between two seasons, you can count on one hand, how many people really, I think liked her. I mean, we listened to the DVD commentary of that episode and Sheehan and Alicia get into a fight during the commentary. They they are absolutely bickering. It seems like it kind of starts like a little fun. And then it, it seems like it just gets back to the old wounds that are still there. Yeah. And and it's it's you know, Jerry Manthe named Sheehan as the contestant she least respects at the Heroes versus Villains like biography, like when you get to name people. Like it, Sheehan like really makes an impact. And I think if she makes people you know, feel so much, then she totally deserved to be an all-star from the beginning. You know, like, I mean, she clearly has a sense of magnitude I and mean, she's only gone for seven episodes in her season and she doesn't even make the finale in all-stars. But like, I think she's like very memorable. So I I've always thought she really deserved to be there. Uh, do you have any other Sheehan moments to um, highlight? Yeah, I, I love, um, I think it's when she meets with Clay, is it? When they think that they're approaching the merge. I think it's Clay where she immediately spills all the beans. Oh yeah, that's about, like, oh yeah, it's awful. It's awful over there. I hated it. I hate them. I hate them. You know, she's like, she is initiating her flip in that moment. Does not wait a second. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and of course, I, I think uh, maybe my all-time favorite moment is when she's doing a, a confessional after she wins the immunity in All-Stars, delaying her execution by three days, she turns to the camera and she says, stupid people, let me repeat, stupid people, stupid players. And you and I quote that and like twist the quote to like whatever we're referring to that day. And we're in traffic or whatever. It's just like stupid. 
Um, I, I, and I think she's great because I think she is like super, she's very well-spoken. I mean, totally give her that. And she's very opinionated and she has no problem ruffling feathers because she believes in the sense of the truth of whatever it is. So like one of my favorite moments for her is at the all-stars, uh, final travel council. It's a very bitter affair. Lex is saying you sold out your values. Alicia's saying you you definitely you like uh, did not outclass us in any way. Tom is like pretending to give Rob a handshake before embarrassing him on national television. I mean, people are angry. And Sheehan goes, well, as someone who played with all of you all stars, I just like to say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> that was wild. It's like Sheehan goes up there and it's like, I am going to embarrass my only friends here. Yeah, like Kathy and Lex are the only people that really kind of gave her the time of day. And she's like, honestly, they still need to be told about themselves. And she is right, by the way. And it's like, you know, she is right. This is probably an example of why she is not exactly everybody's like favorite person out there. But I think certainly my takeaway from all of the preparation that we've done is that she seems like she's actually probably a lot of fun to hang out with and, and enjoyable. If you Maybe her. if you're not starving on an island with her where you're in competition, yeah, yeah. it can go a little better. I mean, I, during the research, I found out, you know, she's like an English literature uh, degree from um, Berkeley. Berkeley, right? So highly educated. Uh, she feels like someone that's maybe correcting someone's speech or the way they say things. It's like, actually, maybe you should do, uh, make the fire like this without actually participating. Like, it feels like she just has a lot of, like, natural tension with people. But, you know, I think that's a perfect reason to have someone on the show. You want people who are going to create tension. I love Eliza Orleans. And between two seasons, she's ostracized on both of them. And it's just really fun. So, yeah, can't say enough about her. So, you know, you had mentioned uh, the conversation you had with your mom uh, from her scene in Thailand where she's, um, I, I think it's Rob Zabachnik is making comments about, you know, her eating habits. Uh, do you have any other takeaways or things to share just kind of from what your experience was watching Xi'an both at the time in Thailand and All Stars? You know, I think Xi'an, uh, if you asked 12-year-old Kevin right after All Stars and asked, you know, who was your favorite forever contestant of all time? I think I probably would have said Sheehan. I think, you know, being an Asian contestant, an outspoken, plucky Asian contestant, especially was really big deal because, you know, Asian Americans have been kind of socialized to keep their head down, not make waves, be a lot more kind of go with the flow in a lot of like corporate settings. And Sheehan said, no, I'm going to create enemies everywhere. And just like me, I really appreciated that, that someone was really going to kind of, have no problem tearing people down, complaining when she really felt that way. And I think she always kind of captured the perspective that the, that the audience was having. In All Stars, she complains about the Shaparas and all these people who are just like not even doing anything about Robin Amber. And she was right. And in Thailand, she's talking about how her tribe is full of idiots. And based on how they did the attack zone challenge, she's right. They were stupid. <laughs> you know, like, like people are often like, Shane just calls everyone dumb, but she doesn't even do that well on Survivor. So maybe she's really the dumb one. But it's like, I don't, first of all, I don't think, quote, being intelligent is the only way to succeed on Survivor because it's like, is Fabio like the smartest person ever? I mean, probably not, but like he's successful because he's good at certain other skills, which are not just about, you know, how we kind of talk about intelligence. So I just really resonated with Sheehan. And um, I hope, you know, maybe through this podcast, we'll get some more people who will see Sheehan for what she is. Cause I think she's actually a bit of a polarizing figure. Yeah. I, I think I would agree that she does feel a bit polarizing. You know, I, I find Sheehan interesting because, uh, all Stars in Thailand were some of the later seasons that I ended up watching. I'd seen many seasons uh, before those. And so she was a name that I had heard of, but I didn't exactly know a lot about Xi'an from the zeitgeist. So going in, I didn't really have too many expectations. And in Thailand, I'm not exactly a fan of the season. I'm not exactly a fan of the cast. The only people I think I like truly, truly enjoyed were Gandia, Rob Zabachnik, and Sheehan. Who and all make the DVD cover, by the way. They so all make the DVD cover, but none of them make the merge, which means there's a lot of season without any of the people I really enjoyed watching. And so I was bummed to see that Sheehan ends up being the victim of a twist. Uh, there will be 
a lot of favorites that fall victim to twists along the way of this show. This was an early warning sign for us. But yeah. um, I think that she is someone who really made the beginning of Thailand as compelling as it was, at least for, for my viewing experience. Yeah, I think so. And I will also say, just to kind of get into the fake merge of it all, yeah, it was a shock twist, but it was a bad twist. I think it was, it's one of the worst twists ever. And I don't say that as someone who just was a Shein fan, like I don't like the whole like hourglass fake merge stuff that we do in the current seasons of four. It's like, did they earn the merge or not? Like, I don't like any of that because I think the merge is such an exciting time. You know, we want to see players, you know, develop new relationships and maybe flip the game and like take control of their own destinies. The merge is like one of the most anticipated moments. And to find out the producers are like, actually, it's not a merge. She and sorry, you're stuck on this group of people who are actually fairly racially insensitive to you. Um, have fun with that. I felt like we had no cathartic payoff other than seeing Shein lose. And so, you know, if you're someone who did not like Shein, and there were plenty of people who didn't, you know, I'm sure maybe that was a really cool moment. But I think I, I don't like the fake merge. I think it's just not a good twist because I think we're looking forward to what the merge can bring. And it really just kind of delayed things by two rounds. And at that point, the Sukh Jais were so down in numbers that it just became a, another pagonging. Yeah, I mean, it did. And, you know, I don't blame the players for missing this twist in any way. You know, it's if you're paying attention, you do notice that Jeff does not use the magical words, but it's season five. I mean, how familiar were people with like, oh, Jeff didn't say this exact phrase that he normally does. That kind of is like setting off my radar in Kageon. Spencer's like counting down the days and it's like, I think it's a final two because if it were a final three, we should be at this place on this day. I There's there's no way these players, I think, should have like actually predicted that they it were It felt like merged. a twist dreamed up by Alison Grodner. You know, it was just like this ridiculous idea. And Jeff himself says, well, I didn't say anything that would make you think it was a merge, did I? Like, it's like, well, obviously you knew what was happening. And it, it was a moment to kind of trick the contestants. And it was a really big moment. But just like Sari not making the final three in Micronesia, and I'm generally pro final two generally at, at, at the end of the day, it's like, I don't like them messing with their expectations because I love it how players plan around the game and can like realize things. And it always feels like my favorites are the ones who are losing. So I even hate it even more. So it, it feels like a twist in the way that the 41. Uh, hourglass well merge yeah, yeah hourglass uh twist is in that it's like well it's not, it's not a twist it's just something that happened yeah. to them right like it's just like oh just kidding you thought that you had uh immunity you don't yeah that's not exactly like a twist right that's kind of like a lie people over <laughs> a lie yeah yeah but you know it's all, all as she says herself she lives everything is fair in love and survivor so I, uh, I, 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 I can't say enough about her. Well said. So, uh, you know, I think that it's probably time that we transition to the research that you normally do to help us prepare. Uh, I'm really interested in kind of hearing what people's thoughts were on Shein at the time, because so much of my knowledge comes from years and years after the current perspective of Shein. So we're going to first dive into the current perspective of Shein and then walk it back to see how maybe that fits into the then perspective of Shein. So, uh, uh, I did my research. I went on to Reddit, of course, to kind of just get a, where, where, what's the discourse like? Um, I searched and found a, a post where someone asked, why did producers choose to bring Shein over back over any of the contestants in Thailand? And the comments, I think, made really great points, which is that, you know, she was a good potential strategist in their minds. You know, she talks about strategy. She's very quick to identify who is on the outside. Like she's very analytical by nature. And so that means that she's someone who could potentially come alive in all stars. Um, and I actually think that's something that she is really great at. She's very intelligent and she, she's really good at the theory of survivor, not great at the execution. And I think that's where the social game maybe gives her some challenges. Um, you know, most of Thailand's cast was not memorable or they were reprehensible. You know, Brian Heideck, I think, as a character technically really does stand out, but like he shot that puppy and like, it's like he, his production doesn't really like him. So yeah. Who else are we really bringing into the fold here? I remember Jeff saying that the final four of uh, Thailand is like the ugliest, least interesting final four of all time. So he's, so of course Those they're going to bring specific words he's using. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't <laughs> like it. Uh, and then also the diversity, 
uh, that other female choices declined and the fact that she was screwed by a twist. So maybe she deserved to come back in some way. And the fact that the twist that happens at the merge is like one of the most exciting moments that you get from the quote merge on in Thailand. I mean, how many more like really memorable moments are there that surpass the, the twist that we get there. You know, I think that Shein is a part of maybe the most memorable moment of Thailand. Yeah, I mean, because the other ones is Ted and Gandia, which right. not the show wants to bury. Well, for... well, I don't think they want, they referenced in the All-Stars oh, tree yeah, no, I, I guess they, that's true. They, they did not realize it was not going to play off very Today, well. They would... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in the if, if you re-released All-Stars, they would edit out that tree mail at least, yeah. I think. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a, other than Brian's wife maybe telling everyone that they're super rich. It, like, but that's not. But that's not a, as big of a moment as what happens to Sheen. Yeah, I think Sheen has. She's at the pinnacle moment of of the season, and so I think it totally made sense for her to return. Um, other things I found on Reddit, a lot of people do saying that like Sheen is overrated. Mm -hmm. Common thing people were saying, um, but I will also say that a lot of those comments on those posts would say like, um, well, the post would say, Shan isn't that smart. She's a really overrated player. And all the comments would say, we don't like Shan because of her gameplay. We like her because of her personality. Yeah, I mean, Shan, you know, tries uh, quite a bit to, to get on top in, in both of her seasons and is not successful. She's able to get into a majority um, on Sukjai, but she's on the bottom of the majority, right? So yeah. th th that's like the most success that she really ends up getting. And it's not for a lack of trying. And there's plenty of people that are really exciting because of their gameplay. And we love to see the way that they try to make things work. And I think for Shein, uh, from my perspective, it's not exactly how she tries to make things work that's exciting. It's her reactions to things not working. Yeah, that's yeah, a bit yeah. more exciting. Yeah. I mean, I just think Shein is... is is funny. I mean, I think that's probably one of the things that you have to get. And I think the people who don't like her don't think she's funny. I don't think they realize, like, they're like, oh, this is someone who thinks they're really smart, but they're not very successful. So I, like, they're arrogant. I don't like them. But I'm a fan of camp. I love it when people are bad at the game. And that's funny, right? It's like, it's, it's fun to have people who aren't perfect. And so I, I do think that's a part of the issues that if you, just like, if you like Shein, you probably like Survivor Gabon. I feel like there's like a connection here. And, you know, I think that Shein is also very dry in her sense of humor, and that's not everybody's cup of tea, right? Which I, I think, it, if you don't enjoy dry sense of humor, you're probably not getting a lot of what makes Shein great. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, but by the time she, Courtney Yates comes around, everyone's like lapping that up as she's so funny. And I think Courtney Yates is super funny, you know? And she has that dry sense of humor. She's like bashing her own allies. And I think maybe one of Shein's biggest issues is that she's not afraid to go after people that per, like America likes, like she totally hates Colby uh, and he hates her back. Uh, and so like, she has no problem being like Mr. January, blah, 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 lecture, lecture, lecture. Like he thinks he's playing such a great game. And then she like is the swing boat that eliminates him. So I do think there's like a, um, uh, she loves to make fun of Richard Hatch uh, yes. naked quite a bit. Like he's very not impressive. Just... Maybe not downstairs, but he's very impressive. She makes comments about like, oh yeah, well they had to blur him. It wasn't a large blur. You know, she she always like takes the moment to really rib the, um, kind of like the overdogs, right? Like she and punches up a yeah, lot, and that's, which really makes her And work. that's why preteen closeted Asian Kevin loved her because she's kind of like, in the way that like a lot of kids like Courtney Yates and they say at their China reunion, you know, she punches up. She's really, she's feisty. She's scrappy. She doesn't care that she's the minority. She doesn't care if people like her, she's going to fight her hardest. And it's not always the smartest gameplay, but it's the gameplay that I, I, I can't help but admire to an extent because I love seeing people try their hardest. And, uh, and unlike Courtney, she actually was trying her hardest at the game. She's just not nearly as successful as Courtney because I think again, some of the social issues, but, um, Courtney yes. was just a little bit better about her dislike of everybody else, right? Courtney says, Todd and Amanda mistake, what is it for friendship? My indifference. 
uh, that I dislike them less than I dislike everyone else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. And the difference is that that's just not exactly applying for Shein with her specific group of people she plays with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I also found some popularity polls, 2016, from Reddit. Uh, okay, so I have Shein has two outings on this uh, poll. I want you to guess which Shein do you think was ranked higher Shein All Stars or Shein Thailand? Uh, I think Shein All Stars. Uh, I, I think All Stars is a more talked about season than Thailand, and Shein goes farther. And I think um, I just I, I think that she has like a little more to her journey because she makes it so much further than she does in Thailand. So Shein All Stars ranks at the 40th percentile. Shein Thailand ranks at the 29th percentile. So she and Thailand's wrong better. again. But I would have thought what you thought, because I like her all-stars journey more, but I think what helps her in Thailand is she is so much better than most of the cast in the eyes of a lot of these people who are voting in the poll. She's actually the second highest ranked person from Thailand, where she's only wow. the, the uh, ninth ranked person on all-stars. She's like middling in all-stars because there's so many big legends. And that's interesting. We we ranked them the other day and Shan was my ninth top yeah. person from all stars so i i match the consensus and she there. might be your second best and person she, from she, i think she is my second favorite from thailand <laughs> right because i think she's my second in thailand because i really well i, think I she, am the reddit casual is what we're finding oh yeah 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 you're you're the baseline for us yeah um and the other things i just wanted to note from her popularity poll because they would show also correlation so you know what were the types of groups and demographics that tended to score shan higher than others and shan does exceptionally well with gay and bisexual uh fans wow it's the camp she and gay icon she's a gay icon in fact of all the contestants that were pulled here because this is i think all the way till uh co wrong so the first 16 years of the show oling jatia taylor ranks higher than she and in like overperformance just with gay fans compared to and let me tell you i love jatia yeah i mean and because if you take them literally if you take jatia literally she's this person that's dumping the rice like how could you like well, being her? bad at challenges and it's like who cares it's, it's because of those things thank, what do you mean thank god someone here is giving us something some flavor and chance always giving us flavor and that's why i just really like her the other things i will mention is that she has strong positive correlations with pg law edna sylvia kwan so like other asians so like you know if you don't like a lot of, if you don't like Shein, you probably don't like some of the other Asian contestants. If you like her, maybe you resonate with them. I'm sure, like, like again, race is a big part of that. In fact, Shein does better with uh, non-US viewers than American viewers. Oh, as that's well. interesting. That's that, even part of the uh, the data. I'm sure it's there. part of the like lens you're watching it through, where Shein maybe comes off, you know, more annoying if you're kind of doing this more ethnocentric view of of survivor which is that like well she's in the minority she must be so annoying it's like well i'm sure that is a huge part of that but at the same time it doesn't feel like a lot of people were giving her a full chance and what i always appreciate about she is that she's even though she's like she can be judgmental and critical i feel like she always understands that everyone is a player on the board and she's open to kind of working with anyone as long as they sell her an idea and i i think you're totally right and she is never um kind of like in the dark on where she stands. I think she's always very aware because of all the fighting, I'm sure, in the comments, right? But she, she understands what her place is and she never settles for it. Yeah, and I love someone who's able to understand that they're at the bottom and want to flip because my least favorite is someone who doesn't understand they're on the bottom and doesn't flip and like contributes to like a stifled game. You know, it's like the Redemption Island zombies or, you know, the people who just don't care. And she ends so polar opposite of that. And yeah, maybe she walks away with a lower stipend, but I think she's just so much fun uh, throughout. So yeah, Shean is in general, I feel like I've, I've identified that she's actually pretty popular. You know, she's in the top half on... Uh, uh, on these cur like more recent polls at the mm -hmm. end of the day. So I think Shein is a, is a popular figure, but though she has some detractors quite often, those, those posts don't get high votes because the Shein fans really come out and they're like, I don't think you get what you're trying to understand here. If you get it, you'll love her. And, you know, I was listening to the Talking with T-Bird uh, that Shein did. Was it good? Uh, oh, I, I loved it. It was, um, uh, it was between season 38 and 39, actually. And she mentions that she did get a call for heroes versus villains. And 
the the casting agent asks like do you want to come back and she's like i literally had a baby yesterday and the casting agent said like oh well that means you have some baby weight that you could like lose on the island right maybe and it would be interesting to kind of consider what Sheehan's legacy would have been had she been on heroes versus villains because i think you know, she's really helped in All-Stars by being one of the people that does not exactly have a big target on her back compared to, uh, you know, all of the winners coming back. Rob Sesternino as uh, an honorary winner, right? I think if she came back for Heroes versus Villains, I don't think her target is like that much bigger either you know she makes it to six but she's like on the outs and stuff you know and the belief so, is that she'd be on the villains tribe right she she and she's a hero to, me. to herself as the she devil that is the easiest uh pitch for someone you know when they do everyone's intros you have to explain like why are they on this tribe you do a five second clip of Shean saying i'm the she devil mess with me and you get the horns next easy yeah and it, actually you know, and I don't know, you know, I'm like one of the biggest Shein fans in the world. I don't know if she is a three-time returnee at that level with all these other three-time uh, three-timers, right? Because so few of them really go on. But maybe we would think of her in that way if she was. But I would have loved her on Game Changers. Let me tell you that right now. I would have died to see her on there. And that's actually, it, it's probably a better season for her because if she was on the villains, she was going to be there with Jerry. We know that Jerry, Jerry and Rob and Rob. You know, like, who does she work with? I mean, probably no one. They just, I mean, Sheehan in Thailand gets votes at every single tribal council she attends. She gets a vote from every single person on her tribe at one point or another because the minority alliance all vote for her every single time they can. And then when she goes, the majority that had protected her had also then voted for her. So it's like, um, so maybe sometimes it's better for Sheehan not to come back. It's like, I don't want my heart to be broken again. Uh, do we want to move on to how Shane was perceived back in the day? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. So what did I find on that? So I actually did find a popularity poll from after Palau. So this is, okay. you know, only a few years after all stars and um, there were 150 people ranked and each individual person was ranked as, as a whole. So like Shan is not Shan all stars, Shan Thailand. She's just she 150 people were there for reference. I believe Amber was like 79. Boston Rob was around that middle eight in the right. 80s or so. Where do you think Sheehan ranked? 64. 47. 47. So she's the top 50. She's top, top third. third. You know, which makes sense. You know, her her Thailand appearance is 29th percentile in the grand I think scheme. So top third feels very fair. Yeah, barely top third. I think that makes sense. And uh, she's right below Krista from Pearl Islands, Kelly Goldsmith, Africa. I feel like okay. again, a crossover appeal. I, I mean, the, the Kelly Goldsmith I'm seeing. And she scores right above Lex and Jervis. Oh, I'm actually a little surprised that she ranks just above Lex, but you know, their allies, interesting that they are right next to each other. And I think they might have, they have different kind of fan bases. In fact, on the uh, Shein Reddit poll from 2016, she one of her most negative correlations. So one that like tends to be the very opposite of her, like they have different fan groups is Lex from Africa. Mm. And I think that's because if you like Shan, you probably like Kelly Goldsmith. And if you like Kelly Goldsmith, you do not like Lex from Africa though. Lex all stars is not in that same boat. And I think and that's just because there's some differences there. They're, they're kind of like opposite experiences, right? Where Lex is on top and has like the stranglehold on the game. And Shan is trying to break out of the stranglehold that exists. Yeah. Um, I actually found also an EW article from Dalton Ross from uh, both of Sheehan's boot episodes. Okay. Uh, let me read this for you. From Dalton Ross, legendary survivor commenter, mm -hmm. uh, Thailand boot episode. First things first, pretty much any longtime survivor fan will tell you that this Thailand edition has been less than stellar. <laughs> it's understated. Still, yeah. <laughs> it, it hasn't been quite as bad as Africa, but it's been close too close the cast has been boring and the challenges uh have been too um but even so every once in a while mark burnett will come up with something pretty gosh darn wily so that's the fake merch he's referencing mm -hmm. poor poor Sheehan. homegirl got played and i gotta tell you i'm not one of those people who found her to be elitist and annoying which references that clearly she had a lot of uh critics uh 
Uh, but she deserved to go for her sheer stupidity for even considering switching alliances uh, alliances with the Chewy Gone group. So you don't like Penny, deal with it. Switch tribes and you ensure that you're the first to go when they get rid of all your former buddies. They were right to vote her Benedict Arnold ass out. Reactions? Wow. Uh, I wrote down elitist and annoying because I think that that's... <laughs> it, it, it's a funny window into uh, the thoughts of Sheehan at the time. And uh, and I love those aspects about her. It, it, that's what makes her enjoyable, yeah. right? And Thailand is the first season where we hear about the potential of a uh, mutiny. Yes, and she doesn't take it. And I don't think she, she should because I don't think by she the time it either. happens, there were still two more rounds left. And I think flipping at the merge wasn't crazy. Yeah, she, maybe she goes out six, but that's like a pretty good stipend. Like, and I recognize that people will often say, Sheehan... You know, the fake merchant didn't screw her because she would have gone home soon anyways. She just likely goes to sixth, which is her all-stars placement. It was her fate to be a sixth placer. A sixth place and, goddess. And her return on all-stars was to correct history. Yeah, she finally gets there. Um, also from her all-stars boot episode, this is what Dalton says about her. So this is, you know, Dalton... Uh, we get to kind of see how he sees her in two different seasons. Say what you want about Sheehan, and people have said a lot since Thailand. <laughs> but she's been the best thing going on about Survivor All-Stars for the past two weeks. She added a little spice, a little sass, and a little scandal. And now she's gone. But what a way to go. I'm not just talking about some angry post-vote-out confessional words, but calling out right smack dab in the middle of Tribal Council. And he also, in the previous episode where she wins immunity, he referenced that as the best episode of the season. And I think he's right. I mean, I think it probably is the best episode of the season. It's at least top three. I think the Amber Swap I think the is, Amber Swap pretty, is, compelling. is pretty good as well. Uh, and then I think... Um, there could be like a... I love the General Rasko episode, though. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's a I really understand sad, but it's, like it's powerful. not every... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah, as, exactly. you, as you get away, it's not about like who you're rooting for. It's more about like your feelings about it and like as you can appreciate all the characters without taking a side as much. I think my, my favorite thing about that episode is that uh, it feels like really the first time that you are seeing everybody as uh, an individual person and that they're people with all these like relationships that go well beyond the show and the veneer of the show kind of comes down for a moment. And I think that it really does kind of almost like set the scene for why everyone uh, feels so visceral about the way that the game is going to play out later because you're able to see the strength of those relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, I also found an article right before all stars by Mario Lanza survivor historian. who has been on RHAP before himself and so this is what he writes about uh, Sheehan uh, when the cast was announced. Out of all the contestants in All Stars, Sheehan is probably the one who I really don't have strong feelings for, one way or another. I have no idea why, but I have just never been that attached to her. However, that being said, she was clearly one of the sharpest players in Thailand. And she happened to get nailed by a twist. Well, I can't say nailed because she was clearly on the out of her way out of Sukjai anyways. They already wanted her gone. I just hope she does a better job this time around fitting in with others. I don't think I don't happen to think Shan will get very far in this game. Remember, she wasn't well liked on Sukjai, and she isn't the the greatest camp asset to begin with. But she is here to play, so you know she might stir up some trouble. No matter what happens, when she goes down, she won't go down without a fight. Uh, I mean that's the most accurate thing ever said about Shan. Won't go down without a fight. And I think it points out to the, the you know the, for the people that were critical of Shan, it's not that it, you know, Shan's inclusion was more about like I mean. I guess I just didn't remember her that much because like there's just other characters that resonated with me more. And I'm sure as an Asian American viewer, she just really resonated with me a lot. So she stood out. So I get like, you know, it was a season that a lot of people kind of checked out of half the time because it's not that great. So, you know, and, and Amazon comes right after that. So like someone like Mario is probably like, Oh, you know, I just don't even remember how I feel about Shein. And I would say pay attention because she does win him over because in his uh, write up after she's booted, uh on all stars on all stars he writes uh first off i was never much of a Shein fan in thailand she never really did it for me and frankly i was a little skeptical when i saw she had been cast for all stars i always thought she was irrelevant and annoying <laughs> but i have to say 
uh, that she did great in All Stars. She was clearly one of the stars of the season, and her Salvation episode where she saved her own butt is one of the best moments of the season. So I give her and the All Stars editors a lot of credit. You turned me into a Shein fan, and I think she kicked a lot of butt this season. She is now one of my favorites. Join the club, Mario. I, I Shein's great. It is nice to see that he is able to come around on her because, you know, I, I will admit that as we were preparing for this episode, I, I don't think I really had particularly strong feelings about Shean one way or another. You know, I I do remember enjoying her at times, but I also, I, I think, remember like a lot of the uh, sarcastic frustration that she's experiencing. And I think that if you were in Shean's shoes, you would also likely be experiencing those same things. Yeah. But being able to go back and, and rewatch a lot of uh, her moments on the show and, and even listening to her interviews outside of it, I think that she is really funny and a lot of fun. And, you know, maybe she's not exactly your cup of tea, but I think it's hard to argue that she doesn't bring a lot to the table. I think she makes other people interesting around yeah, her. Absolutely. You know, people say about Daniel DiLorenzo. Like, I think she's actually a, a pretty important ingredient to Kasaya in Panama being such a fascinating tribe because she creates conflict. She wrestles Amanda in Heroes versus Villains, and Daniel is considered as like a questionable choice for a returning season, but like she technically does, you know, add to the season. She makes other characters interesting. I think that's an important thing to consider. Uh, I also reviewed Shean's Edgic. So that's like what her edit looked like. They give the, all these different scores. And in Thailand, she is visible in all seven episodes she lasts. I don't think that's particularly surprising. And she actually is rated, at six of the seven, she's rated as complex personality. Which Boston Rob also kind of gets that same level, which means that she gets a lot of perspective. We kind of always get a menta- like uh, an insight into her mind. And in fact, I think after Sheehan goes, it's like, who are these other four people on her group? Because Sheehan was really kind of the mouthpiece of that alliance. I mean, that totally makes sense to me. Sheehan is clearly very intelligent and she's very well-spoken and is able to articulate her point of view on things. And, you know, when she goes, I also remember being like, who are these four? Like, yeah. Why Why am I here? I'm not really invested in them. It feels like we're just kind of going to be getting rid of them one after the other and just kind of get to the end of Chewy gone. Yeah. And, and that's why I say, like, I don't think she ends a crazy returning option because she's very visible in the episode she is in in Thailand. It's not as if, you know, like I said, Amber is last way more episodes, but she doesn't even have nearly as many like high visibility episodes mm-hmm. as she and does. So I just think, you know, it's not crazy to have her there. Uh, and then finally in all stars, she is under the radar a few times. Uh, she's often kind of just giving a narration, um, especially when it comes to like Richard Hatch and like some of the other contestants. Um, but she has two major arcs. Uh, the first is in the pre-merge with Colby, who kind of writes her off mm-hmm. as someone who is just uh, along for the ride, choosing not to play the game. You know, it's very easy to play the game she ends playing because all she does is just ask who are we voting for right before tribal council. She doesn't make any decisions. And I'm actually glad that you brought that up because that is a part of her arc on All Stars that we haven't really gotten into. And, you know, it's actually, when you think about it, it it's really interesting that Sheehan is a part of the downfall of Col- Colby. And the way that it's portrayed, I think, is also actually really setting up Amber's win because Colby in, in what he's articulating about the game is really dismissive of someone who is not playing out in front nearly as much. And I, I think, you know, it, it's important that they show all of that with Shan and Colby because it kind of sets up the way that Shan is going to be predicting the future when it comes to Amber, when you get towards the end game. Yeah. And you know, like I said, it, it validates her strategy. She gets rid of the big, uh, uh, powerful player in the way that of Colby, in Colby, you know, like w- one of the biggest locks for all and stars. and she she outlasts him. And you know, same thing. That's why she votes for Amber over Boston Rob. She's always kind of that's her mentality, that's her perspective. And ironically enough, Colby adopts that same strategy in Heroes versus Villains, where he is also the last member of his alliance in the way that she ends the last member of her alliance in All Stars. Well, he learned from her. Clearly. And I also just to mention, Colby also loses four to three to Tina Wesson in the Australian Outback. And part of that is because people were like, was Tina playing Colby all along? I mean, not, maybe not like Lady Macbeth, because it's more of a mother son dynamic mother between Macbeth. the two of them. Mother Macbeth. Uh, so, like, is it 
so I find it very interesting that Colby, Colby, it's not because Sheehan is riding coattails and, and is choosing to play an under the radar game, which is a very valid way to play Survivor. It's because he just doesn't like her. And that is just an extra piece of why he doesn't like her. But I think it's fitting that he follows her, her, her footsteps and is fairly successful because he does so. And I think it's also kind of easy to like claim like, oh, Sheehan would be kind of like falling into the background and not being as, uh, you know, out front when the other people on the tribe are Colby. Richard Hatch, uh, Ethan, you know, there's a lot of like huge names on Moga Mogo. And Sheehan is, I think, you know, she's in the way that a lot of players change their game up when they return, you see like Andrea really being more uh, aggressive when she returns in Caramon because Redemption Island game was very kind of static. Uh, Sheehan, I think was like, I'm going to try to be a little bit more in the shadows this time. Yeah, maybe be more under the radar that this is a valid way of playing. And obviously she goes a lot further. So I do think, uh, there's warrant to like that strategy. And, you know, if she had been in the majority <laughs> when it came to the merge in all stars, maybe she would have gone a lot further, but maybe she was always destined to be a six placer. Yeah. But that's my favorite placement. I love us a good six placer. Uh, and then I just wanted to say also in all stars, her second arc, cause the Colby one is her first arc. Her second arc is of course, after Lex leaves, she is the last woman standing the Pagong. She's actually the first person to say Paganging on the show. Yeah, she so coins the term. She coins the term, wow. which is crazy because she does not watch the show. Like, she ends up a fan of Survivor, but she knew the term. Uh, she's so academic like that. And 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 she she's like, uh, us Mogo Mogos are getting pagonged by the Shapira majority. And, she, and I think she really captures that feeling of what it's like to be the last person. And let me tell you, that is a demo, that's a that's a personality or an archetype that I've always really appreciated, especially when I was first watching Survivor. Um, I loved Colleen, last mm -hmm. of the Pagonged of her group, the OG Pagong. Uh, T Bird in Africa, you know, Elizabeth is all, you know, she, she they're able to kind of switch up the game a little bit, but she's really the last of her she's tribe. She's the last of her group. Um, I have always loved the last person, and those people had never succeeded until like Chris and Danny succeed a few seasons later. So, you know, it it, it really is. You know, Survivor doesn't have Pagongs anymore because you have all these tribe swaps and twists and, and the players are so, you know, kind of Open out of to switching things up. And but like uh, Sheehan was like so refreshing because she's willing to constantly keep pushing for a, a way in. And, you know, maybe if Sheehan was, uh, was a person in modern Survivor, maybe I wouldn't like her as much because everyone is so strategic. So it's not special. But back in the day, she was so unique for 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 being so groundbreaking in, in the way that she approached the game. And so uh yeah, she, I think Sheehan, you know, has two pretty good seasons. I, I don't think she ever reaches the highs of of Richard Hatch in his right. first season or or some of these other like A-listers, but I think she's she deserves to be uh on the alternate list, I think for a three-timer. I don't think she's a, a, a and it sounds like she essentially was, right? She gets a call for heroes versus villains, but it doesn't make sense and I think, you know, based on what we get from her from these two seasons, you know, I think it makes sense that Heroes versus Villains was probably the last time she was going to be called. I understand. Yeah. Well, that's all I had kind of for the historical analysis, Nige. All right. So are you ready to kind of uh, jump into what our overall you know, view of her legacy is now that we've gone through all of this? Yes, I am. All right. So I want to reiterate a couple things that I wrote down uh, from the research that you did. Uh, elitist and annoying, people have said a lot. Stir up trouble and irrelevant and annoying. These are a lot of um, not positive ways, essentially, of describing Sheehan. But, you know, I think that they're all really fun. You know, like, I, I love camp in the same way that you do. And that, you know, th these can be taken in a really negative light, I think. But... As you said, I think Sheehan is really a, a piece of what makes all of this work because, you know, maybe she's like annoying, but her being annoying at times is what drives the conflict. That's what makes episodes interesting, right? In the DVD commentary of the episode where she wins the immunity challenge and Alicia gets booted, Alicia and her are going back and forth and Alicia repeatedly says throughout this episode, you know what, Sheehan, you are really annoying. You are good at being annoying. 
And she loves getting under people's skin. And because she's really good at it. Yeah. And I think that's like, she's like, it's a skill she has. It's a skill she has. And the way that Amber's really good at like connecting with people and like being such a peace oriented, she ends like, no, I know how to set everyone off. And I think on Survivor, like that's kind of, you want to see people who do those things, right? People who push people to behave differently. And I think that's why you can call Shane a lot of things. You would never call her boring though. You would never call her boring. And yeah, you know, maybe it's not always like, the smartest move if your end goal is to win a million dollars. But I don't want all of my players to be game bots who are making the most logical move for themselves every single round. Where's the interesting uh, moments in all of that, right? Like I want to see people who are going to be getting into fights, who are going to be pushing people's buttons and, and egging them on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so do you think Shan should have been on All-Stars? Yeah, I think she should have been on All-Stars. Um, I, I feel much more confident about that, having gone through all of this information. Um, because, you know, I, I don't think that, like, Shan is one of the first people that you think of when you think of seasons one through seven, when you're trying to build out an All-Star list. But I think part of that is because Thailand is not exactly a a love season by the fan base right she's the only returnee ever from thailand so it's not like production has uh, a lot of love for thailand either so i think that kind of results in her being a little more forgotten than if she had been on like pearl islands for example i think if shane had been on pearl islands and they don't have like the outcast twist and that's replaced by like the twist that happens on thailand and she goes then she's probably one of the most remembered people from the uh, pre All Star era, yeah, and I you know I've always believed that Shan deserves it. I think reflecting on some of the historical stuff, I see that you know clearly I had at the time been far more in the Shan camp than I even realized. But I do think like the evidence is clear that Shan absolutely earned her spot, and I think she should be given it considering they really screwed her in my opinion yeah i feel like she deserved another opportunity to come back just for this twist that they pulled on her but i think that you know what i really appreciate about Shein is that she delivered i definitely prefer her all-star appearance over thailand partly because it's like it, it feels a little less um of like a bummer and she has a higher high in all you know she, she, she has a higher game. high she sticks it to them one time including her own allies at, at the final tribal she, she really proved that it was worth her getting a call for her to come back. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I think she absolutely deserved to uh, return. And I think, it, I think everyone listening to this should also agree with that. But if you don't, sorry, she did. And I'll say, I think she totally could have come back for heroes versus villains. I think she actually would have been someone fun to come back. I recognize that heroes versus villains was like star studded, totally packed, but you know, if they had, replaced Courtney Yates with Sheehan because I, I think you make a good point that they have a lot of like similarities of being the smart, witty, sarcastic, acerbic younger women. I think she totally could have filled a slot that, that Courtney yeah. held. Maybe we would have seen her, you know, yucking it up with Sandra on the beach. Oh, what didn't that, but because she would have loved to work with Sandra, I think, but you know, I also feel like, you know, what I noticed about Sheehan is that she is very, she she likes Kathy a lot and Lex. I think they're actually kind of a white collar group because Lex is like a marketing manager, I think. And Kathy is, of course, like this businesswoman, like real estate agent. So they kind of become their the Mogo Mogos are the um the white the white collar tribe. Uh we like to conserve the civilized tribe. That's what Kathy calls them when they go to the oh, yes, that's the right. summit where to, like, they don't use tribes. the paint. They don't use themselves. the paint. And then like Jenna Lewis on Shapiro is like, we immediately opened the paint. No, no, no. It, it it's that <laughs> It goes from Kathy saying, like, we don't know what this paint is for. We might need to use it at the challenge. And so she's like, are, yeah, I want to put that on either. We are going to conserve. And then it cuts to Jenna Lewis saying, as soon as we got the body paint, Jenna Lewis assumes it's body paint, right? Yeah. Like, I, and it's clear that the instructions did not say that for Mogo Mogo because they they have no idea what the paint's for. So it's like a really fun uh, difference between and a great it's a great way to frame the tribes yeah you know and the cultures that that really make those and that's something different. i always loved about old school survivor is that you know the tribes were really distinct cultures they were groups that had their own identities their own norms their own values um and i think that's why she and also stood out so much is because she could comment on those things because she she is very good at picking up on like a group dynamic i think she references in her thailand bio as one of her hobbies is quote organizing people 
which is not a skill people tend to really like in others <laughs> for the record. So this makes sense. But um, do you have any final hot takes on Shan? Cause I, I do I have a few, few final comments. I don't know that I have any, you know, like hot takes about Shan, but I will say that I think what I really do appreciate about her is that, you know, given the way that, her tribe does not exactly take to her in Thailand. Uh, the twist that she gets, you know, constantly being back on the outs in All Stars. I really appreciate that Shean like never seems to let it get her down. You know, she's met with adversity, and her reaction is to push back with strength. and And I think that that can be like really inspiring, and um, I find it exciting in a in a TV character. Yeah. Uh, so some of the things I just wanted to mention here is that. You know, I think she has a very similar personality to Chaos Cass and Sophie Clark. Mm -hmm. You know, both highly intelligent, well-spoken, but some social challenges even in their seasons uh, where maybe they don't always take their guard down at times. You know, these are very smart, calculated people, and they're more methodical. And quite often, I think what they share is that they hate people who are a little too, uh, they shoot from the hip a lot. They do not like those people. You know, Sheehan hates Rob Zabaka because she thinks he's stupid. Uh, Boston Rob, you know, he's like a bit a loud mouth, you know, Cass doesn't like Tony, uh, uh, Sophie can't stand a lot of the members in, in that season as well. And I think it's because they, they are highly intelligent and they're such, they're such fast processors. They don't understand why people can't keep up. And as someone who can relate to that to an extent, I get why people also might think I'm annoying, uh, because I'm thinking about it and I just like, why, why, what do you mean you haven't thought about it? And Alicia and Jenna Lewis and them are like, why would we think about it? We want to get rid of you. I don't want to think about another plan. Like they find the constant wheels turning as annoying rather than as energizing. And I found that energizing, which is why I think I like Sheehan and a lot of those types of characters. Yeah. They were like, Sheehan, you don't understand. This is all we want. Yeah. We don't want to flip on Boston, Robin, Amber. We want you to go home. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I'll mention is that, you know, if there was an Asian American Mount Rushmore, I think she answered the George Washington, if you will. Mm. You know, she's the first and, and and her Asianness is such a huge part of her story. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. It's 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 not just that she is the first Asian person on Survivor. It's that as someone watching at home, you get to have a conversation with your mom about you know, like what this means and how other people perceive you and she and, and I think that that's uh, really special. And, you know, part of why I love Survivor so much is when you're able to think about things that go well beyond just your episode of television. Yeah. I, I think it was so important to have her there. And, you know, she is an Asian woman that gets a lot of votes is not particularly well liked is a bit of an outsider. And that's a bit of a trope on Survivor, you know, to, to, uh, I, I just kind of looked on the wiki for like Asian American contestants and look at a lot of the women and a surprising amount of them also got votes at their first tribal council. Even if they weren't eliminated, they're, I think, quite often seen as scapegoats, easily targeted, uh, sneaky or weakened challenges because of their physical size. So a quick rundown of some other Asian American contestants, female contestants that got votes at their first tribal council include PG Law, Brenda Lowe, Becky Lee, Helen from 44, Christina Cha, Edna, Jenny Kim, So Kim, Justine Brennan, uh, Nadia Anderson, and wow, this is a lot. <laughs> also later, Natalie Anderson in season 40, you know, is the is voted off, right? Um, Rachel Lako, Sylvia Kwan, Mari Takahashi. Uh, and then even people like Erica and Karishma did not get votes, but you know, Erica had been the target before she had got an immunity from the hourglass thing. Karishma, I think, has still the record for most votes cast against a single person in a season. Like, there is something that is here about, and I, and I feel like it, it doesn't mean that the people around them are, like, anti-Asian or anti-Asian women in particular, but, like, I feel like this is a trend that, you know, should be kind of discussed a bit more. That is a crazy large number of people, and, you know, for those of you not watching the video, uh, I can like look over at his piece of paper to see what he's written down. And it doesn't even look like there's that many names written there. But I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. I think it's hard to argue that there's not some sort of correlation that exists there. And maybe it's not, um, you know, so on its nose, but uh, clearly there's something happening. There. And what I love about Sheehan is that like, she understands that is part of the issue, but she never lets it beat her down, you know? And, and she, even when she's at the, the fake merge, when she talks to, 
to, to Ted because Ted is African American, right? So like, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of connect that about what it is to be a little different. And he goes, well, do you think it's a race thing? And she's actually very hesitant to say it is. You know, she's just, you know, I mean, it's more cultural. Like she really doesn't want to like, it's, it's funny because she doesn't really care about tearing people down generally, but in this moment, she's like, oh, I don't know what I want to call them racists. Yeah, Shane's like, I recognize that we're on national television. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be throwing uh, anybody and myself under the bus here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's like super open about her Asian-ness being a thing as well. Like, uh, it, it, in the episode, she wins immunity. Rupert gets to kind of give out food to everyone based on like the pecking order. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gets a steak Rob gets uh, like a burger or something and it goes all the way down. And Sheehan is the only, is gets the bowl of rice and the water from camp. And Sheehan, you know, takes it on the chin. She goes, well, is the water purified? Uh, <laughs> I feel like, did you guys do that at least? And she goes, well, stick the Asian girl with the rice. And it's like, she's so, she's so aware of how things are turning out. Unfortunately, she's not really great at getting people to see that with her at the time. They just think she's kind of a crackpot. Sure. But I, I, I think... I give a, she and a lot of credit for being, you know, a ballsy, plucky, you know, small Asian woman who was not afraid to take the game by the Sheehan horns themselves, the she-devil horns. And it's just, I, I found her really inspiring. And so I really kind of wanted to mention that. And the final thing I like to say is I found um, her quarantine questionnaire that she filled out. Oh, and I forgot about the quarantine night, questionnaire. You're going to love this. Okay. okay you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. What is something that will blow fans' minds that happened out there in one of your seasons but never made TV? This is okay. what she said. I also helped get Rob Zabachnik cast on the show because during casting, they asked me who I thought was hot. And I named Rob. I thought he was cute. No <laughs> way. Little did she know the nightmare she was setting up for herself. But that's that's the I best part love, about Sheehan. She I, creates her nightmare and lives it. I love the idea that Sheehan was like giving producers material to be like, ooh, are we going to have our showmance on our hands here? And she always- Sheehan and Rob. And she and she, she, she laughs at it. And she's so willing to kind of laugh at what the reality is. You know, as much as she, you know, is condescending and looks down at like a lot of the players and their decisions, you know, by the time she is at- the final travel council, she goes, like, we all were played. And, you know, that's also what Edna says at in South Pacific about, you know, coach duped us all. Like, you know, I, I think Sheehan really kind of sets the tone that it's like, this is a game and she understands that she does not take these things personally. When in fact, I think she probably should, because uh, it, it seems very personal. As Rob Zabachnik said, uh, when he voted for her that one round, he goes, uh, what does he say? I don't like, he, he's, <laughs> it's, it's something along the lines of like, you're annoying. And you're, Sheehan, this vote isn't personal. You're just annoying and I don't like you. So like you're annoying and I just don't, uh, you're annoying and I nothing can't personal. stand you. Yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. That. something along those lines where it's like, this feels like it's ex exclusively personal. So yeah, I mean, I just, I just, I really, you know, I, I just love Sheehan. I think she's a great uh, addition to Survivor history. And I think she's, you know, a really important figure, especially as an Asian American. Like, I, I can't, like, I can't appreciate Sheehan enough, uh, even though, She's not nearly as successful as Yule or, or any of these other ones. So I think people tend to herald even higher. I think Sheehan, you know, is just such a fun and important and unique character. And um, I'm always going to be very appreciative of her. Well, there you have it. The story of Sheehan. Yeah. You thought you knew Sheehan. And I, I think everyone should know a lot about her now because we talked for over an hour about her. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, if you have thoughts that you want to share, favorite moments about Sheehan, funny comments, uh, share with us on Twitter. You can find me uh, on Twitter at Nigel Speed. Kevin, what's your Twitter handle? You don't know it? Well, why don't kidding. you share it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on Twitter at, at Asian Narc, which is short for my Instagram handle, at Asian Narcissist. And uh, you want to share what we have coming up? Yes. Well, we have an episode with Beth Dixon. Uh, you probably know her from the RuPaul's Drag Race RJP recap show. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about Ozzy from Survivor Cook Islands, Micronesia, South Pacific, and Game Changers fame. And we'll be answering the question, is Ozzy one of the best to never win? So stay tuned for that in your feeds. And we have a lot of other great characters like Eric Reichenbach uh, and JT Thomas you know, in the tube as well. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.